All right, political maverick uh, Bob Catter has announced he's handing the keys to the Catter's Australian Party to his son Robbie. The leadership change marking the party's 10th year. He's a straight-talking and often polarising political figure. The never dull Bob Catter standing down as leader of the party he founded, Catter's Australian Party, but he's keeping it in the family. His son Robbie Catter stepping up to fill his shoes. I'm here to do the job. Um, I, know what, I know what values I have. Uh, you can make your comparisons uh, between yourself and this fellow next to me. Um, I, I, I probably consider myself a bit more uh, slow to act. And, I, and that can be interpreted as a good thing or a bad thing. With a career spanning almost 50 years, 74-year-old Catter insists he'll be keeping a close eye on the nation. I'm a gladiator. I have to have a sword in my helmet and my shield, and I won't be retiring from the ring. The party picked up three seats in Queensland's last election, but federally it failed to wrangle any seats outside the division of Kennedy. I'm 75 years of age, almost, almost. Um, I'm at the height of my intellectual powers. The party's focus will now be on this year's state election. It wants more dams built, a rail line to the Galilee Basin and a better focus on rebuilding industry in regional Queensland. We're not happy with three seats. We're going to secure more um, in the next state election and uh, we've had a good work formula that's worked well for us and um, you know, I can pleased to report that we've been the only sort of constantly growing minor party around that's um, based in ru rurally or regionally, if you like, in Australia, and uh, we've proven that continuity now. Brendan Smith, Sky News. All right, joining me now, live in our Brisbane studio, of course, Bob Catter and his son, Robbie. Welcome, boys. Uh, much appreciated you coming in. Uh, look, we've got uh, some news coming out of Canberra. Matt Canavan has offered his resignation, uh, Bob Catter. Uh, there's going to be blood on the floor tomorrow at National Party, uh, at, at their party room meeting. We've got uh, a challenge to Michael McCormack from Barnaby Joyce. Can Barnaby win? Um, I thought he had the numbers last year and I was very surprised when I was informed by insiders that he didn't. And, um, and I don't know that the numbers would have changed very much. I mean, all of Western New South Wales now belongs to the shooting farming and uh, fishers party, uh, <clears throat> all a third of New South Wales. I mean, half of Queensland belongs to us. Mm. I mean, <laughs> what are they doing? They're just squabbling. I mean, you've been there for 26 the last 30 years and you haven't built a single dam. You've chewed up $540 million of the taxpayers' money having a look at them, right? If you did something to justify your existence instead of squabbling about who's going to be the chief, then maybe you could get back into the saddle and we could have a country party again, such as rule this nation for the 20 years after the war. Not the Liberals, us, the country party. Bob, is Barnaby the right man if McCormack's not? <sighs> Look... You know um, him well. Joyce... I, I know Barnaby extremely well. Joyce has all the right, uh, you know... Um, what's the word? Imperatives. Pedigree. Imperatives, you know. I mean, he has the uh, instincts. That's the word I'm after. He has all of the right instincts. But, you know, as the so famous picture on the wall says, you know, if you're a Christian, what did you do today to prove it? Well, I mean, if you're a country party, what did you do yeah. in the last 12 years to prove it? And much as I like him personally and argued very strongly that he shouldn't resign, uh, I've got to say you've got to produce some results. Mm. And uh, the, quite frankly, the trout package just makes me want to cry. And I can just see agriculture is fading away. 30% of our cattle gone, 60% of our sheep gone. There's nothing happening out there. Mm. It's just all just dying. Mm. Bob, you announced today that you were handing over the reins to the young bloke, Bob. No, uh, sorry, he, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, w what does that mean for you personally and for the cattle oh, party? I think he's taken the reins. I don't think I even <laughs> took I think he took them off me. And... Uh, no, look, oh, I said today, you know, uh, yeah, I've been up in the stagecoach um, with my shotgun on my lap and holding the reins, right? So I'm climbing down the back now uh, and they, they can face the Indian arrows, the three of them. And, uh, but, uh, but, no, I'm a gladiator in the ring and I won't be retiring from the arena. I can tell you that I won't be taking a backward step. But three other gladiators have climbed into the arena and I hope one of them is Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, it's a, it's a legacy that, you know, you big shoes to fill. I mean, you must be, um, you must be excited at the prospect of, yeah. of leading the party, but also a little bit daunted because yeah. he is a, he's a dynamo. Yeah, um, 
excited because I think, you know, one thing I look out in regional Queensland and, and it makes me despair. There's, it, it just, it breaks your heart what we're not doing and what we're not achieving out there. But, you know, you look at that as opportunity too for mm. someone and I just think with just some changes, we're just a bit of grunt there in Parliament. We get in there, mm. we can make sure we're not talking about Bradfield scheme, we're actually building it. Mm. Oh, we're not just talking about Galilee Rail Line to unlock the Galilee Basin. We're building it. Mm. The government will build it. We'll own it. You know, you can do this stuff, mm. so it's exciting. But at the moment, we're watching it all crumble away. You've been particularly vocal on the vegetation management stuff and My the inability word. of uh, farmers to control yep. their land. Yep. They know their land better than anyone. Yes, yes. Particularly yes, when it comes yes. to back burning and fires. Yes, 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 yep. yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, um, yeah, sorry. No, I was going to ask you, I mean, what are the big issues that uh, you see coming into this state election in October? Yeah, theme? well, you know, those reef reg laws and the vegetation management, if you want to point the finger at the Labor government we've inherited here in Queensland and just say, well, here's a couple of things where you smashed this with no no real reason to do it and, and no basis for it. Um, there's two things you could point at that just smash this. And oh, I've actually got two amendments to that, those laws going in, uh, that'll be debated tomorrow night, so we'll see how people vote on that because... They're pretty basic, but mm. um, you know we've got we get a drought at the moment. I think it's about 20 million hectares we've got in Queensland of mulga trees. They grow back one mm. or two years, even in drought, they grow back. Mm. You knock them over, cattle, kangaroos, everyone else can feed them. Why not in the period of the drought just allow them to knock down some mulga? It'll all grow back. Mm. And, uh, they can't even do that. We just mentioned regional airfares and Rex uh, pretty angry with Qantas. I mean, th that's a big issue. It costs oh, more to travel from Longreach to Brisbane oh, than well. it does from Brisbane to LA. Yeah, yeah, it, you know. I, I cop it in my you know, electorate office. Uh, Dad does as well because they've got a stranglehold. There's these big corporate airlines that um, they've got it locked up, and uh, that was government's role. Government's mm. role is to say mm, the market's not really effective here because everyone's the planes are full. Our numbers have just down increased another increase of passenger numbers through Mount Isa Airport. Mm. You go to Longreach, Mount Isa, Concordia places where Qantas was founded there. These airlines are, uh, you know, gouging on these routes, mm. and uh, we pay for it, mm. and um, and it's presumably subsidising all the other domestic. Because I hop on mm. plenty of planes here that aren't mm. as full, mm. and the, the, they're paying, you know, I pay hundred bucks here, where I'm paying seven hundred bucks to get home, man. Either. Bob, I mentioned gas. I know you got some views on that. <sighs> Look, I I was the minister. I was the mines and energy minister when we originally put the gas through to Mount Isa. Mount Isa is the biggest industrial hub in this nation by a long way. Five thousand million dollars comes out of that tiny little town where he lives, Mount Isa. Um, gas is threatening the whole lot. I mean, how we, we did a deal on gas for $1.60, we are now paying $16. We sold it, all of it, to overseas interest for six cents. And we Australians now have to buy it back $16. And every time we raise the issue, we get a lecture on how free markets and international trade is for the good of Australia. Mm. Well, it would be nice if you stood up like Donald Trump does or like the Chinese Premier does or like the Russian leader does or the Brazilian leader or the European leader and say, we're out to look after our people. Mm. That's our gas. And uh, Huey Long... The most famous, most popular politician maybe in world history, he was assassinated because he doubled the price. Um, sorry, he took the gas, had a reserved resource policy for the people of Louisiana. And um, we as a government in Queensland had reserved resource policy on coal, so you had your electricity on free coal. <laughs> free. Um, that was the principle that we mm. applied, reserved mm. resource mm. policy. The Western Australian government is applying it now, mm. but the federal government won't apply it. Mm. Um, um, surely you do not allow a foreign corporation to screw you white and close down $5,000 million worth of production because you haven't got the backbone and spine mm. to be able to stand up and say... Um, we have a reserved resource policy and 1% of that gas will be kept for Australian industry. Bob, Morrison's been copping it over the bushfires. He's had a pretty ordinary summer. He's just lost Bridget McKenzie. It looks like uh, uh, we may have a new National Party leader tomorrow. How do you think Morrison's travelling? If I... And I will be speaking to Scott. And, I mean, Scott, you've got to do things. People don't want to hear rhetoric. Mm. They're not interested in rhetoric. Um, either you build a dam 
or you don't build the dam, right? Now, you burnt up, your government has burnt up 540 million. Peter Crinlan said, it's not me. 540 million is put there, it's all gone, and there's not even an engineering plan. I mean, <laughs> never mind about a dam being built. There's not even an engineering plan. Now, a lot more than 500 million has gone up. But you're not capable of governing. You're not the government. Mm. That's what I'd say to Scott. Scott, you get out there and get into these, you know, munitions factories, which Chris Pine, for the first time ever, said they'll all be built here in Australia. Mm. Even if we can't build them as good. It, anyway, you get down there to that factory with a hard hat on and they see those munition factories being built. You get out there to Hyundai and sit on the dozer, you know, with, with a hard hat on and they're watching the dams being built. People will love you in this country. Robbie, how's um, Frecklington travelling? I mean, we've got this by-election in Corumbin coming up. Mm. I mean, it's going to be pretty close. I'd imagine Jan Stuckey's been very outspoken mm. about uh, her criticism. But then, of course, we see the way in which the Labor Palaszczuk government has underperformed. They've been ridden by uh, or riddled by um, uh, scandal with, yeah. uh, with uh, Jackie Trad. How do you think uh, Frecklington's travelling? I think it's pretty fair to say no one's setting the world on fire. Um, and, you know, surprised me with that Crumbin by-election because I just heard back down in Brisbane today for the first week of Parliament and, you know, a bit of talk was like it's not a lay-down misere, which I, was, I thought yeah, it was, yeah. and, uh, which, you know, starts to make things interesting. But, um, you, you know, probably again, like, um, if, uh, saying what your Dad's mentioned earlier is it's just a, probably a bit too much rhetoric there, like going up and saying we're going to build a Bradfield scheme, that's brilliant, mm. but tell us what you're doing now because we've got... You know, we, we want to make things happen tomorrow. Like, you know, I've got vegetation management amendments in there tomorrow. Let's vote for that and take on Labor there. Uh, let's just see some action on things. And um, I think, uh, you know, people will receive that well. But it's, um, yeah, it's no one setting the world on fire there. And I think people are looking for some inspiration, especially in the regions. We're about to go to a break, guys, but, um, <clears throat> Bob, what would you say to Robbie, uh, the advice you give to him in taking over this party that you founded and the legacy that he's inherited? I mean, have you given him any, a bit of a pep talk? Uh, you know, he, he, we had a leader and he, he uh, lost his seat. We had another leader, he lost his seat. You know, the blokes we've got now are on 60, 70 and 80 per cent, right? The people clearly love them. Um, I can't dream of 80 per cent. He's on 80 per cent, I'm on 60 per cent. So... I mean, it should be, it should be holding the reins here. Um, but if I said to you, um, Sir Leo Hilcher and Bajocki Peterson, they build 300 kilometres of rail line every year for 20 years. We can't get 300 kilometres built to open up to Galilee. And don't you dare try and stop the people of India and China from getting cheap electricity. Try and do that and you will be writing a death warrant on your own country. Um, if goods don't cross borders, then guns will. Clausewitz had that dead right. Um, firstly. Secondly, do something about it. The Hell's Gate Dam will produce all of North Queensland's electricity with zero emissions. Mm. We, the CO2 is not a byproduct, it's not an emission, mm. it is a product. We need it to feed to algae, to grow the algae, to feed chooks, moo cows, pigs, whatever you want to feed it to. Mm. Um, but it is not a byproduct. It's but get off your backside and do something about the planet. In the next hundred years, there won't be any uh, coal there anyway. Bob Catter, lovely to have you join us in Sky News across Australia, as well as Robbie. Thanks for joining us as well.